I'm going to try to keep it as tame as possible tonight. Um, some of you probably have heard me speak before, and you understand how passionate I've been about one singular issue for the last number of years. Does anyone have a guess what that is? One day, one vote. Oh, you guys have heard it. I like it. So one day, one vote, right? Because what, what are we doing here? Why are we even here if we don't have real elections? Why do we bother showing up? I'm being serious. Like, I... I ask everyone, I go, what, you know, what's the point? If we don't have true, fair, real elections, what, why do we even bother to do this? Why do we even bother to vote? You know, there's one man in this room who had the, uh, who had the balls to actually put forward the legislation of one day, one vote. It's Rep. John Fillmore back here. Everybody, I think uh, we need to stand up and give him a round of applause. He's the only rep. The only legislator that we had that had the balls to actually put forward legislation for this state to secure our elections. One day, one vote, on paper, in person, in your precinct, no mail-in ballots with ID, no mail-in ballots and no machines, right? Because that's the only thing that matters right now. What's the definition of insanity? Same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And I appreciate Lawrence earlier. He's really been the only one that I've heard as we've been going around speaking who's really nailed it, that election integrity is the only thing that matters right now. You know, there's some great questions and I appreciate these and I will get to these. But do these really matter if we don't have fair elections? Does my position matter when I'm, when I'm elected chair? How long does my position matter if we don't get free and fair elections in this state? Because what are they gonna do in 2024 with our state legislature? Flip it. Flip it. What do you think the odds that we retain our Republican majority of one seat in 2024? By a raise of hands, who thinks we will hold on to the majority? Um, like a, a couple hands up, okay. So what happens when they flip the legislature in 2024 is we've long expected. We, we said they were gonna give away the governor's seat this year. We've been, you know, we, everyone's sense of urgency right now and everyone who's feeling that panic feeling after this communist was just given the governor's seat, that, that feeling that you're getting, that you're having right now, I've had that for over two years because I knew that day was coming. And that's why you've heard me be so aggressive. Everyone, oh, Steve's mean. <laughs> mean tweets, right? Well, guess what? I knew this was gonna happen. And we've been telling people it was gonna happen and people didn't wanna listen. You know what they wanted to do? They wanted to vote harder. They wanted to go get on board their favorite campaign with their favorite candidate and become tribal and beat each other up in the primary. And meanwhile, none of it mattered, did it? And look how we divided the party. Look how everyone's mad at each other within the party. You know, I'm the president of the Patriot Party of Arizona. We've got the signatures today to form the Patriot Party of Arizona. I could go file them with the Secretary of State. But we've been trying to avoid that. You know why? Because we've been trying to unify the actual true grassroots. One of the questions up here talks about how you're gonna unify. Well, guess what? The independents, they're probably the most important block we have right now, right? Yeah. And guess who they are? Guess who the independents are? They're my people. They're the pissed off Republicans who are so fed up with the establishment games. And you're going to hear these other candidates come up and speak about being chair. And it's going to be the same stuff, the same wash, rinse, repeat that you've heard every cycle. I've never done this. I don't want to have to do this, but I feel called to do this because I feel this is the only way by, by actually taking back the Republican Party and controlling that seat and having that bully pulpit, I believe it's the only way that we will actually, if we can, secure elections in this state. You know how we do it? We have to get our legislature to first pass election integrity legislation. So if we've got any elected legislators in this room, I need a sponsor for one day, one vote. Because you know what they did to Rep. Fillmore? When, after he sponsored that legislation, you know what they did to him in the primary? They got rid of him. Why do you think they did that? Because again, he had the balls to actually stand up for true elections and the establishment doesn't like that. 
So it's your duty, it's each one of your duty to put the pressure on this legislature. You have to pressure them. And sometimes you gotta be a little mean, guys. I'm sorry. Because that's the only thing sometimes they respond to. J John will tell you, we went at it. <laughs> Ask him, we went at We had some pretty tense words. But I respect him because he wasn't petty about the whole situation. You know, I'm very pragmatic. I'm very pragmatic. I'll work with anyone if I do believe their heart's in the right place and they're trying to accomplish the same goals. And that was what he, he saw that, and I saw that in him. And it, it took some real, it took some basically FU type conversations to where we actually now got on the same page and said, okay, let's do this. So I appreciate him for that. Who's in the old, is anyone here from the old LD25? Rusty, old, old Rusty's district. I know I appreciate the fact that you helped out with the recall that we ran. We, get, you know, we had over 25,000 signatures to recall Rusty Bowers, and then we saw that same uniparty system kick into gear when the Secretary of State Hobbs kicked those out on the technicality after their office had not provided certain instruction, they withheld certain information, because they protect the establishment. Now guess what? I heard about Runbeck earlier. Well, I just heard that the new speaker-elect Ben Toma has asked Rusty Bowers, I've been told this, I haven't confirmed it, but I've, been heard, I've heard that he's asked Rusty Bowers to be his special advisor. Good job, guys. Thanks, Ben. Guess what? Ben's, Ben's family, they own a company called Black Mountain Investments. Black Mountain Investments owns an aerospace manufacturing company. The president of this aerospace manufacturing company sits on the board with Ben's two brothers. This same guy, his name's Jeff Ellington, is the president and CEO of Runbeck. So our, this is our speaker, our new speaker-elect. This is, this is how bad it is in the Republican Party, guys. This is why we started the Patriot Party of Arizona, because it was to, to conserve, maintain and conserve constitutional conservative leadership in Arizona. We knew how bad it was. We felt that was the best way to push the Republican back in, Party back in the right direction. And I feel like we've done that in a lot of ways. We were able to get one day, one vote through the Senate Government Committee, thanks to Senator uh, Kelly Townsend at the time. We actually got J.D. Mesnard to flip his vote. When he walked into that hearing, he wasn't a yes vote. But we went up there, and we stood there, and we spoke, including Rep. Fillmore back here, and he explained why it's important. And Mesnard flipped his vote, and it actually moved forward. But guess what? Senate President Karen Fan blocked that legislation. To where we're at in Arizona, guys, I don't know. I've been here since I was five years old, back in 1984, originally from Kansas. I don't want to move, but I also don't want to live under communism. Look at California. That's where we're headed very quickly in this state. If we don't have someone at the head of this Republican Party, that will do whatever it takes. And when I say whatever it takes, I mean it. Whatever it takes to get fair elections in this state. And there's no one else running for this position. I don't care how nice they are. I don't care how experienced they are politically or in business, they will not have the, the, again, I'll go back to, they won't have the balls to do what it takes. You know, I was um, very involved in Purple for Parents for a number of years. I was on their board. Thank you to, to James over here for getting elected. He's got his purple shirt. He wore his purple shirt to his first meeting. Michelle Dillard, the president of Purple for Parents is in the back here. Woo! You know, we've done a lot over the last number of years. And I bring this up because I was at a school board meeting the summer of 2021, and the police decided, and the school district decided they didn't like what I was saying outside of a school board meeting, so they decided to arrest me for talking. So that's fun. So I dealt with that for about a year. I had Judicial Watch helping me out on the civil side, but I had to hire, you know, I had to hire a criminal attorney to defend myself, and then I got charged a second time because I wouldn't put a mask on to go to court. So they charged, they trespassed me for my trespass hearing. I bring this up, it's not about me, again, like I said, if you wanna to go to electsteedaniels.com, you can see my accomplishments. There's a flyer here they're handing out. There's gonna be a meet and greet at James' house in a few weeks. If you wanna hear about like my personal accomplishments, great, let's have a conversation, but it's not about me. I'm doing this to secure the elections in this state. You know, I've run the, uh, the Patriot Party of Arizona for the last couple years. We've raised over a million dollars from private donors. I know how to do that. I know how to do the job. The job's the easy part, guys. The job's the easy part. The hard part is having 
the, the ability to stand up in the face of the opposition, and trust me when I say when we're going to have opposition these next few years, it's going to be massive. And do you think that we're going to have anyone else that's running for this position that's going to actually potentially put themselves in harm's way to get this done? Because I will. And I can tell you, based on who else is running, no offense, they don't have it. They don't have it. So if you want this party back in the right direction, and you want the independence to come back, and you want me to give a voice to the people, because I'm doing this to give the power back to the people, bottom line. This is for the PCs. You know, I've been a PC for a long time. When they tried to take away our, our PC elections, I mean, how insane was that? And, you know, Michelle, myself, you know, we were the, some of the first ones raising that red flag, calling out what was going on. We need fighters, guys. You know, we're, we're, this, is a, this is a spiritual war. We're definitely in a spiritual war. We need people that are prepared for that. We're in, we're in a war. Would everyone agree we're in a war for our country and our state right now? You need a wartime general. You need somebody that will fight. You need a fighter. You need an activist. I'm an activist. You don't need a professional, you don't need a politician. You need an activist who will fight. And that's why I ask you to vote for me because I'm gonna fight for you. I'm gonna fight for the state. That's it. So does anybody have any quick questions? I have a couple minutes left, I think. Does anyone want me to address anything specifically here? I think I've kind of hit on it. I mean, election integrity, it ends and begins with election integrity. Question over here. We do. Thank you for bringing that up. So the legislature needs to put a bill on her desk every week. Make her veto it every week. One day, one vote on her desk every week. And then guess what? I use that state chair platform. It's a big pulpit, right? It's a big bully pulpit. I can go on whatever news stations there are. I can go on whatever, you know, I can interview with whoever it is. And I can sit there and I can beat the hell out of Katie Hobbs. Because I will. I will beat her up so hard. I will be in her nightmares. I will be in her nightmares. <laughs> it won't be fun. It's not going to be fun. I mean, it's not going to be fun for me because I'm going to imagine how much opposition I'm going to take doing this. You know how hard the establishment's going to come at me? But I'll do it. That's what I'm signing up for, ma'am. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Uh, I have a professional background. I can sit in boardrooms. <laughs> I know how to get along. I know how to fund. I know how to ask people for a lot of money, and they write checks to me. I have that ability. You know, I can. I'm kind of. I can mirror. Or I can mirror myself to the situation. A little bit of a chameleon when it comes to that. So yes, I have the ability to be very calm in my demeanor, but I'm also very forceful when it's needed. We need a fighter now. But I can unite. And I know how to talk to people about that. We're out of time. I'm sorry. Okay. I appreciate everyone. Again, it's electstevedaniels.com. I will stick around to answer questions after, so I'd love to speak with as many of you as possible. And again, James is hosting a meet and greet. Grab one of the flyers. It's got his number on it, so you can RSVP. I thank all of you. Thanks, Steve.